you will hear testimony from the gentleman that I have a great deal of admiration for in the next few days. The gentleman is from Sacramento. His name is Nathaniel Colley. Nathaniel Colley is a black lawyer. He was former general counsel of the NAACP. He was born in Alabama, came to Sacramento, opened up his law practice, and became truly one of the prominent lawyers in the United States. See, when an unknown comes before you, somebody has to go ahead of him and warn you that somebody is coming and describe it. When you come to the President of the United States, they just say, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, a country lawyer from Sacramento comes, you need a big press release, a congressman to tell how great you are, and all the rest. Describing himself as a country lawyer, it's like we all look back on ourselves of where we came from. And for him, he's still that guy that came from Alabama. He saw himself as a small town guy, but he was playing in the big leagues. There's no question about that. I was born in rural Alabama, and I represent, I think, something special in America, and that is, you can come from anywhere and go anywhere if you really try. And I came from rural Alabama, where I was unfit for picking cotton from the very outset. First, we're gonna have to uh, lay the facts on the line. Uh, about the existence of discrimination in housing. Uh, we're going to have to educate the public to the fact that it is an existing thing which is a real problem. And the Supreme Court said that a state must use all of its resources in every reasonable manner to achieve desegregation. In some communities, a bus is the only reasonable way to achieve it. But all things uh, being equal, I think under some circumstances, we're going to have to have some sort of uh, compensatory or preferential program if we're going to close a gap which has occurred because of discrimination in the past. Nathaniel Colley stood tall with the giants of the American Civil Rights Movement. During a 43-year law career that spanned seven California governors and nine U.S. presidents, he played a vital role in ending the discriminatory practices of many institutions. His life's work transformed the city of Sacramento, changed the state of California, and impacted the country as a whole. Matt was a giant, there's no doubt about it. His impact was tremendous. When he walked into a room, he was the kind of person that people turned their heads and looked at. You know, he integrated the police department, he integrated the fire department, he made it easier for teachers to get jobs right here. Uh, legally, uh, he opened the doors and uh, threw down a lot of the discriminatory practices that were present, uh, not only in um, retail establishments, but something is just as benign as, say, going to the local swimming pool or a local skating rink. Those are the types of things that Nathaniel Colley made sure that access to those uh, particular types of activities were available for blacks. People forget um, that things like police, fire, schools, housing, uh, employment were not integrated before, you know, Nathaniel Colley. So when you think about the second half of the century in Sacramento, I can't imagine anybody having a greater footprint on our community than Mr. Colley. Nathaniel Colley's life began nearly a century ago in the segregated South. He was born 20 miles outside of Selma, Alabama, the youngest of six children, raised in substandard housing by a widowed mother who recognized his unique talents early on and encouraged him to read books. And she wanted dad to be educated because he wasn't fit for like he said, working in the field. He uh, was very thin and he was sickly. After graduating high school from nearby Snow Hill Institute, Nat Colley attended the Tuskegee Institute, where he met a young co-ed from California named Jerlene Jackson, who would soon become his wife and later convince Nathaniel that her hometown of Sacramento would be a good place to live and work. As a student, he studied chemistry and was mentored by the famed scientist George Washington Carver. After graduating first in his class of 1941, Nathaniel Colley set out to become a chemist, but his experience in World War II changed the course of his life. 
You will never know how much trouble it gave me to lead a black company in the Solomon Islands and in the Philippine Islands and in New Guinea. And people would ask me, why are all the people in your company black? And I also recognized the segregations and the evils of it. And I determined at that time that something had to be done about this. And so I made the bold move of deciding to go to law school. Captain Nathaniel Colley returned to his home state after the war. He wanted to enter law school at the University of Alabama, but was turned away because he was black. Another door soon opened, this one in the Ivy League. And two years later, as the only African-American student in his class, Nathaniel Sextus Colley graduated from Yale Law School with honors. He and Jerlene then headed west to build their life together in California's capital city.